Pentheus and I, who had come as his attendant and the foreigner, who became our guide to the spectacle we were to see, climbed the hill. In a valley full of streams on the hill above the town, we watched the Maynards sitting under fir trees, their hands busy with their happy tasks. The ill-fated Pentheus could see none of this and said to me, my friend, from where we stand, my eyes cannot make out these so-called worshippers, but if I were to climb a towering pine tree on the cliff, I would have a clear view of their shameful practices. At once, the foreigner did an amazing thing. Reaching up to the tall fir tree with his hands, he grasped the tallest and topmost branch and dragged it down, down, down to the dark earth. He bent it down, an action no mere mortal could do. Then, seating Pentheus on the branch, he raised the tree back towards the sky, taking care for Pentheus not to be flung off. Once straightened, the branches soaring into the sky bore my master astride, making him more visible to the Maenads than they were to him. A look around provided no comfort as at the time the foreigner had disappeared from my side. Then a voice, the voice of Dionysus. From the sky he proclaimed, Women, here is the man who made a mock of you and me and of my holy rites. Now punish him. A flash of dreadful fire stretched between earth and the high heaven. The world fell silent, the cry of any beast silenced by this voice. The women stood up and looked around for the subject of punishment. Then came a second word of command. As soon as Cadmus's daughters recognized the clear bidding of Bacchus, with the speed of doves they darted forwards, mouths foaming. Violently, they flung pieces of rocks or boughs of pine trees at him. They hurled them as javelins through the high air all around. Their target missiles flew, yet every aim fell short. The tree's height baffled all their eagerness. Then, his mother, a gow, cried out to the Maenads to stand in a circle around the tree and take hold of it. They came, a thousand hands gripping to the pine, and tore it out of the ground. From his high perch, Pentheus came plunging, crashing to the earth with one incessant scream. Pentheus, defeated and damaged, made one last effort for his mother to recognize him and forgive his errors. He tore the headband from his hair so his wretched mother might recognize him and not kill him. Mother, he cried, it is I, your own son Pentheus, whom you bore to Echion. Mother, have mercy, I have sinned, but I am still your son, do not take my life. Her eyes rolling wild, she was possessed by Bacchus. She paid no heed to him and instead grasped his arm between wrist and elbow, set her foot against his ribs and tore his arm off by the shoulder. It was no strength of hers that did it, but the god filled her and made it easy. One by one, they tore him limb by limb from his body. One of them carried off an arm, another a foot, the boot still laced on. His mother carried his head over Cynthion's pastures, thinking it the head of a young mountain lion. Inside the walls, exulting in her hideous prey, shouting to Bacchus, calling him her fellow hunter, her partner in the kill, comrade in victory. But Bacchus gives her only bitter tears for her reward.